French fries are awesome, but crinkle cut fries are awesomer, and there's only one way to make them. Rub scratch with a potato. So, how do we turn regular potatoes into crinkle cut fries? Well, first you need, well, duh, potatoes. Two medium sized rusts that should do the trick. First, first thing you gotta do, give these guys a good clean, make sure all the dirt is off. All right, once the potatoes are nice and clean, grab a peeler and peel them. Off to the compost pile you go. And by compost pile, I just mean the regular trash. Okay, our potatoes are peeled. So how do we get them into a crinkly shape? Some high-tech thousand dollar machine, grabbing an X-Acto blade and painstakingly carving every nook and cranny like some sort of Japanese artist? Also no, it's with a knife. But not just any knife, a crinkle cut knife. This is nice and wavy. It's perfect for making our crinkle cut fries. Link in the description if you want one. And as with any knife, do be careful with this. I underestimated sharpness and I ended up cutting myself, which is why there was no episode last week. All right, with that PSA out of the way, let's get to cutting our potatoes. Okay, now to make the crinkle cut fries, take a potato, lay it down on its side, Cut off a centimeter thickness from the potato. Then julienne these. Nice and crinkly like the fries they serve at Raising Cane's. Like I said, one centimeter thick slices. See Europe, we do use the metric system. You ungrateful bidet users. And once again, julienne these. And uh, put these in a tub full of cold water. Oh no, the potato ends won't be crinkly, but meh, that's just life. Speaking of raising canes, let's remake the canes dipping sauce. Because ketchup is so mid and plebeian. Even though this does use ketchup, man, whatever. Okay, let's add one cup of ketchup. One cup of mayonnaise. Mix these two together. One teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. And half a teaspoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Okay, correct me, you'll actually gonna need three teaspoons of black pepper. And the juice of one lemon. Okay, what I have here is pretty damn close to the cane sauce at Raising Cane's. But before we continue, a quick ad break. <sighs> no, 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 no. <laughs> what got me so triggered like this? Well, if you want to find out, hop on over to my Patreon and sign up. Is that not an option for some reason? That's fine. Just hit the like button and subscribe. Anyway, back to our fries. So just give them a nice washing in cold water. And after they're done soaking, put them on a towel. Let's dry these off as best we can. Place them onto a plate. And you want know to use the tea towel. They're more sturdier and um, I guess more eco-friendly or whatever. Anyway, okay, dump this out. Once again, pad these nice and dry. Okay, our crinkle cut fries are ready to be cooked. So how am I gonna cook these? Twice fry them? Well, no. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while, but it's time once again for... DRJ's Unpopular Opinion. I really hate twice frying. I know it gives you the crispiest fry, but it also gives you the dirtiest kitchen. And every time I try twice fry and I end up with a greasy overcooked fry. And if we just need to cook the potato, let's just cook the potato, which is where this baby comes in, the microwave. All I have to do is cook the potato and fry it once. 
This has been CRJ's Unpopular Opinion, brought to you by David Doe Bricks Pizza. What? I'm sorry, wait, what's that? That's an actual place. He opened an actual place called Dobricks. Ah, jeez. Jeez, f*** YouTubers sometimes, man. So, stick our potatoes into the microwave. And nuke it on high for five minutes. Ah, okay, our fries are done nuking and most importantly, cooled down. Uh, fair warning, when you take them out of the microwave, they're gonna be steamier than a porno set in a dim sum factory. So they're ready to fry, right? No. Because I have a confession to make. When I went from microwave to fryer, the fries were still a bit on the floppy side. And that's because of excess moisture, and we need to draw all that excess moisture out. And there's only one way to do that. The fridge. So pop these in the fridge and dry them out for 24 hours. Okay, it's been 24 hours. Our fries are nice and bone dry. So now we're ready for cooking, right? We are actually. I have here a five quart Dutch oven filled halfway up with oil. And we're going to warm that up to 375 degrees. Did we shoot down your weather balloon? The number you're looking for is 190 degrees Celsius. Okay, once our fryer heats 375, slowly dunk in our fries. Cook it until they're golden brown and delicious. All right, these are looking pretty golden brown. So, take them out of the fryer into a bowl. Like the Marines, I never leave a man behind. Give everything a nice sprinkling in salt. Toss the coat. And onto a plate. Take our fries, dip them in our imitation cane sauce. And give yourself a pat on the back because this is way better than expected. I really wish I got this out last week until it's only on Super Bowl Sunday. Nah. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ making something fun and meaning it this time. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, smash the like button. If you really liked the video, become a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon. I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and support me on Patreon. And uh, yes, I'm filming this on Super Bowl Sunday. And no, I'm not going to tune into it. Yeah, I'm still pissed off at what they did to us SpongeBob fans.